Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm out in the cut flower garden this morning and I'm gonna plant some seeds. I'm so excited about it. Like so excited that I'm going to brave the breeze out here. I don't know how, I mean it makes it a little more difficult when you're spreading compost and fertilizer and stuff like that, but um, it, it's just so exciting. I've got a stack of things that I wanna get planted and I'll probably do it over the course of the weekend. It's Friday today, our water is supposed to be hooked up to the space on Monday. So I will water it in by hose, which we do have a hose nearby, um, and then just keep an eye on it this weekend, especially if it's really windy so that they don't dry out. But then uh, the automa automatic irrigation should start in and then I won't have to monitor the water quite as closely. So I'm really excited about that. Benjamin is out here with me. He's eating his crackers, his snack over there. Uh, you can see kind of where we're at here, the honey berries we just planted and moved uh, to the corners there. Paul is over there working on the high tunnels. The dahlia supports are up. Irrigation has been run and it's done in all the corners now. When we did the little tour through here, this was not done, this corner. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you what we did. So we did a grid system just like last year and we're gonna have two zones. So the zone over here will either be for melons, like watermelon and cantaloupe, well, watermelon particularly, um, or tomatoes, I can't decide. And then right here, will be pumpkins and squash. The reason why we're doing two zones is because whether or not I go with watermelon or tomatoes for that little kind of corner, um, they need to be watered differently than the pumpkins and squash. And that's something that we need to improve on from last year. So anyway, what we'll do is wherever I plant something, we'll pop in individual emitters. So I have it measured to where if I want to space them out seven and a half feet, I can do five one row and then go in between kind of and do four five, four, five, four, five. So I think we'll still be able to fit quite a bit in, even though this space is a little bit smaller than last year. So I mentioned that each rectangle is about eight feet more narrow and 20 feet shorter than last year, which last year's garden was just kind of insane. I mean, it was so much fun and I loved it. But in terms of size and what we're doing with it, what our purpose is with it, we really didn't need it to be that big. Hey, are you warm enough over there? Where'd your sunnies go? Are they right there? You watching Corey Carson? No. no. no? I'm watching this Train videos? No. Oh. Anyway, I've got all my supplies here in the back. Now I don't want to cast any blame, but there was a stack of land and sea bags that were all broken from somebody's tractor forklift skills. So anyway, we're gonna be using through all of these bags today. I'm just gonna spread a light layer. I've also got my um, starter fertilizer. I'll sprinkle a little bit of that in. And that's what we did last year. We just put compost and fertilizer in areas where we were gonna plant. And we are hoping to improve that system through the years, You know, especially if we get our own com compost system going in the back. Um, we'll be able to do leaf mulch in here and, and work that in. But last year we had such great luck and I think it's just because this field has set unused, unplanted for so many years um, that there really is, like there's a lot of nutrients in there even though the soil looks white when it dries and it gets all cracked looking and horrible. <laughs> um, but I, it grows some good stuff, I can't deny that. Well, based on last year anyway. Is it a little too breezy out here for you? I'm gonna call your daddy and tell him you're heading in, okay? Love you. <laughs> okay, so here's what I've got. I've got some baby's breath, which I think you have to seed every couple weeks for a succession harvest. Uh, clary sage, bells of Ireland, bupplerium, bupplerum, uh, a bunch of larkspurs. So we've got fancy peak pink with white bee, misty lavender, earl gray, uh, Galilee blue, splish splash, summer skies mix. And then we've got wrinkled cress and penny cress. A couple of different types of flocks. I've got grandiflora starry eyes and cherry caramel. A couple packets of that. Uh, bee's friend, Phacelia. Phacelia. Uh, white finch or Leia. And then some lebanimist, right? Is that what it's called? Nigella lebanimist, right? Anyway, Albion green pod chocolate and cream. Oh yeah, love and a mist. Ha, I was right. Uh, black pod, there's another green pod and a delft blue. So we got a whole mess of seeds to get through. I've also got a stack of um, garden markers. These came from Gardener Supply. And uh, did I bring my marker? Yes. 
and a garden marker. I've also got my nice cup of coffee out here. Which one of you guys sent me this uh, mug in a meal time and I love it. Okay, first things first, I'm going to spread out a little bit of compost and my Biotone starter fertilizer. Oh, here comes Aaron. I got the compost and fertilizer spread on these first three rows, which are technically four rows each, uh, 47 feet long. I think this is gonna be a perfect area to start in. I'm saving this front section that's closer to the driveway for stuff that was really showy and beautiful all season for us last year, um, like zinnias and rebecca, snapdragons. Um, they all looked so good for so long that I thought, oh, that'll be pretty along with the dahlias. So you'll see those crops first. So I think I'm gonna hold off until tomorrow to plant the seeds because it's just a little bit too windy. It makes it hard, especially when you're working with light seeds to get them where you want them to go. If it's windy tomorrow, I'll probably just try to make it happen, but hopefully it'll be nice and still. But at least the amendments are done. I mean, that's the hard part, kind of. I mean, just getting those things kind of spread out and ready. So what I'm gonna do is take all my seeds inside and my labels, my tags, and I'll get those all written out so at least I don't have to do that um, out here. It'll be nice to do that at the kitchen table. So anyway, see you guys tomorrow. So it's been almost one full week since we started this project. It's been so blooming windy every single day and then sputtering rain on and off and just extra cold. We had a hailstorm in there uh, that I've just been pushing this project, like putting it off. Uh, and I think if I keep on doing that, it's just never gonna happen. So we're just gonna go with it. Hopefully everything goes well. The reason I didn't wanna plant when it was so windy is it's just hard to keep everything moist. I mean, we're out here in the middle of just kind of nowhere. There's nothing to protect these seedlings from any kind of wind. So so yeah, I just thought, well, if I could wait till it gets a little bit more still, but it's just, uh, it's not happening. <laughs> also, the guys have come and they're starting to hook up the water to each one of these sections. And they're supposed to have it done by, well, sometime this week, which is the end of the week is tomorrow. So I'm not sure that it's actually gonna get done all the way, um, but it'll be nice to have that going because then I can automatically water these and not have to come out here and do it with a hose. So basically what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to, because the, the ground isn't 100% level, especially Especially since I added a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out with my hands and plant. And I'm just following the instructions on the back of the seed packets. That's the best way to go. A lot of these things I've planted before, um, with exception, the phlox is an exception. I've never planted that from seed. Um, what are the other ones? The buplurum I've never planted. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. And I've actually never grown cress before either. So anyway, it'll be fun to see how these do out here. And I don't think I'm gonna need any more than these three rows, which are 47 feet long, right? 60 minus 13, that's how big these cutouts are up here. Um, that should be plenty for this kind of first, uh, first little batch of crops. We did, Paul repaired the obelisks. You can see them. I laid them down in the corners here because it's just so windy, it kept wanting to knock them down and I don't want them <laughs> to break again. Anyway, I'm thinking since we probably won't have benches this year for these cutouts, we'll just put the obelisks up and grow some vines up them and I think it'll be really pretty. Anyway, let's just get after this seed planting and hopefully we get it all done today.
all in the ground. It rained for a little while. We got a little bit of hail, uh, a little bit of breeze. It's kind of starting to die down a little bit, which is kind of nice. The only thing I did not end up planting out here were the Bells of Ireland because as I was reading up on that seed packet, which I did before I planted every single one of these varieties just to make sure I was planting them at the right depth. Even if I planted them before, I just, I think it's good to refresh yourself and just to make sure because we want to want to try to have success with these things but bells of ireland need light in order to germinate which means i need to plant those up closer to the house where they'll get the attention that they need um, typically with those kinds of things it's just a little bit more uh, maintenance in terms of keeping them moist enough to germinate and when they're out here in the north 40 with no protection from all the wind it just wouldn't it wouldn't happen but everything else fit into these first two rows which is crazy i got into some of the packets and there just weren't very many seeds in some of them um, and I'm a chronic heavy seeder so I will probably have to thin some out but it's actually really great because I've got potatoes that I want to get in the ground and this row is all ready to roll so I think that's where our potatoes will go this year and this cut flower garden is kind of like a whatever we want to plant in it <laughs> sort of garden like last year we did pumpkins and tomatoes I did my melons corn um, I had some fall crops in there so peas and carrots and uh, beets and chard and I don't know what else beans we had all kinds of stuff mixed in with the flowers and I kind of love that anyway let's take a look at where everything's at so you can see here I've got the two varieties of flocks and I have a piece of landscape fabric over the top of them because they do require darkness in order to germinate. I may have to go grab a couple more bricks to keep, I just saw the wind kind of lift it <laughs> right there in the center. Um, anyway, I just want to make sure that they're getting what they need. I've never grown that one from seed before. Next, which you can't see the tag, it's right underneath the cloth, is clary sage right here. Then we've got baby's breath, which you're supposed to plant like every couple of weeks to have a fresh harvest. So you successive plant that one and then our succession plant rather. Um, we've got white finch orlea right here. And then we've got the buplurium, buplurum right here. Somebody needs to tell me how to pronounce that one. Gosh. And then we've got bee's friend, which also needs darkness. However, these seeds, it does say to bury them a quarter of an inch deep. So I think they have plenty of darkness being covered, but I had this landscape fabric out here and I thought, well, why not? I'll just cover it and that way we won't hopefully mess up. And then the second row is all nigella and larkspur. So we've got nigella first, there's delft blue right there. The next one is chocolate and cream. Then we've got Albion green pod, uh, Miss Jekyll right there, Albion black pod, and then one that's just straight up love in a mist, which is the common name for Nigella. Oh, and then Cress, I forgot. There's Cress in here. So there's Wrinkled Crinkled Cress right here. And then Penny Cress. And then all of these are Larkspur. So we've got Splish Splash, Galilee Blue, French Pink White with Bee, uh, Summer Skies Mix, Earl Grey, and Misty Lavender kind of nice because we do have a frost free water faucet there with a hose link I'm able just to pull the hose right out water them and then it retracts right back into its little thing what do you call that shroud case whatever anyway <laughs> we have a water source nearby and I'm hoping I only have to hand water them for a few days before our water is actually um, set up and I'm able to run it from my phone uh, which will be super super nice but I'm just so excited to have these things in the ground this is yeah this is the first thing cut uh, plant in the cut flower garden um, so it's kind of kicking off this season which is way earlier than last season so last year we were planting in mid-june mostly I planted some of my sweet peas just because they were getting so lanky I think maybe toward the first part of June and I had to hand water them the whole time. It was a total pain um, to do that because our, we didn't have any water source close by and so I had to hook up multiple hoses and drag them across the land to get them to my sweet peas. It was worth it in the end because the sweet peas were gorgeous. But anyway, we're just so much um, more experienced, I guess, this year and I think every year we'll just get better. Um, we never know everything so I think we'll learn We'll learn how to do things better and more efficiently every single year. Um, we'll also learn about spacing, um, irrigation. We'll learn about different crops and how to succession plant them so that we, you know, I don't know, that we're getting the most out of this space and then we can give away as much as we can. And I don't know, it's just a really fun, fun space. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.